Welcome, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. My name is Joe Long. I work for Results Positive. Uh, we're going to talk today about the network device life cycle in network automation and how network automation can help to automate and manage the entire life cycle of a network device. This is my welcoming slide. This is my second slide. We're going to start. I'm not a big slide guy. I'd much rather go into the product and show you how it works. On my screen now, you should see your home page or landing page when you log into network automation. This page is configurable. Uh, the page that I'm showing you, the configuration that I'm showing you is out of the box. So if you do an install, get the download from HP, load the test version. When you first bring it up, this is the kind of thing you will see. The difference here is that this particular version of network automation is connected to a demo lab. It has several devices that have already been discovered, and they are under management from network automation. However, it is a shared lab. So many times I may have to tell you I can't do that because there may be somebody else looking at the same device, so I can't change it because they're showing it on another screen. But this should give you a good idea of how it works, what it does, and how it manages network devices. What I thought I'd start with today is to show the life cycle of a network device. The life cycle kind of starts with, I need to add a new device. Network automation includes, out of the box, tools to help you bring in a brand new device. These device tools include such things as a device template. Now, your device template, as you can see in this screen, is pretty basic. We're going to give you the base information about a device. So let's look at one that's been built here for a 7200 test device. If you look at the way this configuration template lays out, it's kind of basic. You'll notice that network automation has assigned a driver to it. The driver is selected based on the type of device it is and the type of software it's running. We also included a comment on this particular device template. The next section tells you how you want to talk to it, how you communicate to it, both in and out. You make your selections based on what your company uses for that particular type of device. Maybe you support SSH, maybe you only support Telnet, maybe you support only SSH1, but you make those choices there. Then you have the reverse communication path, which may include SCP, SFTP, maybe you don't use FTP at all, in which case you would simply uncheck the box. But you decide how you talk to the device. Then you talk about anything else that may include it, such as ACL parsing, you have a specific description. But what you've done when you've finished here is you have basically come up with a description for a device. It's not complete. It only gets you started. And it's why it's called a template. In addition to the device template, Network Automation provides another tool called Configuration Template. The Configuration Template works with the device template to give you a much broader picture of what this device looks like. In this particular sample, we have a Cisco IOS base template. If you look at the details of that template, you can see in the configuration file many of the things that you would see by default when you brought the system up and loaded the base OS onto the system. This configuration file would be your base or your starter, how that device, when it first comes up, would look. So now you're looking at the infancy of a network device. But your particular organization probably already has devices that look like that. So if I look at this particular organization set of devices in inventory that are managed, I look at another 7200, and let's look at the one that is in uh, Perth. Just, there's a 7200 right there. We'll just pick it. And this device is managed. So at the device's home screen, you can see we know where it's at. We know what type of device it is. We know what services it's running up here. It's running up here. We also know what the level of uh, software version is. We have assigned a driver to it. We know its memory. We know a lot of things about the device, and this is mostly obtained from SNMP query. But the second thing is a management system. We do log into the device, which means now we can actually pull the complete current configuration of this device. We bring back the configuration. 
We parse it into sections for making viewing of it easy, so I can go to the interface section and take a look. But we bring back the entire configuration file and store it. Now, why? Well, primarily because it serves as a backup. You have now a copy in server automation, I'm sorry, network automation, of the configuration of that particular device. But that's not all. We also discover the hardware configuration through the use of some diagnostics. So I'm just going to open one here to show. You'll see the personal information for this device. You see who the contact is. You can see where it's located. You can see other things. But in addition to that, we bring back serial numbers, service type, we bring back the image, we bring back the system memory. We bring back a lot of critical details on this device. And if you'll notice at the bottom of the screen, you can see when they changed. We're going to talk about that in a moment. So basically, in the life cycle of a network device, and the life cycle of a network device, you have its birth. We built the hardware, and now we know what software needs to go on it, and we can take this software package, make it a template, and deliver it to a brand new device, bring it up on the network, adjust its local settings, who manages it, its IP address, its port connections. And that device then becomes a managed device and functional. And we did all this by an automated set of tools that let us deliver those needs and that design to that device. So now we've moved into the, the middle life of the, of the device. The device now is going to run for several years on our network. It's going to serve us faithfully. It's going to need to be upgraded. It's going to have iOS changes. It's going to have setup changes. It's going to have ports that have been turned off and on. It's going to go through a very busy life of transporting traffic and then serving our needs. So one of the things that network automation can do for you is keep track of what that device does and what that device has done since it's been on the network. So let's take a look at Perth. And you see the device there. And you can see the simple thing that we did to search for it. But now we just want to look at Perth. And we want to view some diagnostics on the device. So let's go back to the screen we looked at before, which was device information. And at the bottom of it, you can see that this has changed over time. Well, what changed? One of the things in network automation gives you the ability to take a look and see at what it was and what it is. So in this particular device, we had renamed the information. <laughs> That's what we did. And so that was enough to trigger it as a change. But if we also had changed the serial number, or maybe we had changed a card in it, it would also show up here as a change, because we gather all of that information as a part of the diagnostics. Also, in some devices, you change the uh, configuration file quite often. So here we have a device called Brisbane. That's its host name. And you can see that on the left, was the older configuration, and on the right were the changes in the newer configuration. In this particular instance, we changed this IP SPD's SP queue to nothing. So this was eliminated from this file. You can see the three lines here that were deleted. It is shown as a, uh, a, a Linux type view, uh, lines changed. Lines inserted are green and lines deleted. But this is the middleware, this is the middle life, I'm sorry, of a network device. This is its day to day life. It goes through changes, it manages what needs to be done, network automation makes these changes. And network automation, for example, automates the ability to do many device tasks. One of the most common that's required is to be able to just change the password. Most offices, this is done every three months, sometimes six months, sometimes more often. But network automation can take that information, keep what it was, break out the new, and then keep a ticket that it was actually done. Why is that important? Auditing. When an auditor comes in, one of the first things he's going to ask you is, how often do you change your passwords, and can you prove it? Since network automation keeps track of all the tasks it's run against devices, you merely have to pull the history of your devices 
sorted by device and providing with a printout. He'll love it. He'll have everything he needs to prove that you did it when you say you did. Now we're going to get into the end of the life of a product or device. It's now served faithfully, but guess what? There's a brand new box that makes it run faster, better, quicker, and cheaper, as always. This is a list of the devices that are used in this particular demonstration. And we're going to say that one of these devices now is being replaced. Or maybe a better example would be we're going to replace every 7206 we have. And we're going to replace it with a new type of device. If you look inside of the inventory, you'll see a set of groups that have been defined. And in this particular case, we have a group of Cisco iOS 12 devices. There are nine of them in the group. So let's say that we're going to go to Cisco iOS 15 on every one of these devices. And in order to do that, we need to upgrade them. So let's create, I'm sorry, we were going to replace the 7206s is what we're going to do. So let's create a group and search for devices. that the model number contains 720. And let's go search our, data, our, our managed devices. And we end up with five. There they are. At the bottom of the screen, you can see that now from this result of this query, there's a lot of things I can do with this information. I can mail it out. I can save it. I can make a report out of it. There are many things I can do. But we're going to save this as a group called 7206 old. Now, next to the part where I create the group, there's an important box it's called dynamic group. And dynamic group means exactly that. The criteria to be in this group is you must have a model number that contains 720 followed by any character. Every uh, predetermined six hours, it's predetermined out of the box, but that is changeable. Network automation will go and check its members of its groups and make sure that they're current. So if a new 720X type device comes in, it's added to the group. By the same token, if one disappears, it's removed from the group. So let's create a group called 7206 old. And now when I look at my device groups, it shows up. It has a list of six devices, I'm sorry, five devices in the group. There they are. And I can look at the individual members of the group. I can edit it to change it. There are other things I can do. But this is my group. Now, over time, I'm replacing the 7206 with, let's say, we're going to replace it with 26 elements. So as they're removed and moved out of management, you would take that device and you would mark it as inactive. When you do that, it's still in the inventory. We still have all of the historical information about the device and have stored it and can query on it. But it's no longer managed. We don't talk to it on a regular basis. We don't query it for changes. We don't monitor syslog on the device. So the device is over as far as we're concerned, but it's never over for auditing for however long your industry needs to keep it. Some cases it's a year. Commercial products uh, retail usually is a year. Uh, banks may have as long as seven years. It just depends on your industry. But you keep, the, you keep the device. So let's take a device in our group. And let's select one of the devices. We'll use, uh, we'll use Perth again. And we'll mark that device as deactivated. In other words, we're no longer managing the device. Not that it's going to disappear. That's delete. And it's indicated inside of network automation by this little icon you see here that's marked as inactive. The beauty of the system is you can have these in here. And by simply using the checkbox here, all of your queries then no longer include 
those devices we no longer manage. You can also do that when you write your query for the for reports. As this group goes smaller, because they've been disconnected, then you know that your 7206s have been replaced with the new product, the 2611s that have done it. By the same token, you would build a dynamic group for 2611s and watch it grow. It's a quick way to get status of a project and network device land. I think that's about all for now. I would like to also touch so briefly on one other thing that we include here. In the, at the end of the system, or even during the middle of the life of the, of the device, we have a report that we produce. The report is quite extensive. It gives you a lot of information about the devices. They appear as they are managed. This report is produced on demand or on a regular basis. If you look at the devices here that are included, these are the, the devices that are included in our test case, in our demo environment. We keep track of who they are. We keep track of what they are. We keep track of lots of, of items about them. We know when they were changed. We know how often they were changed. We keep statistics about the change history, the time of day. We know who did it. In this particular case, it was somebody who doesn't have an MA login ID. We know the device status. And this is one of the most key ones here used for display and for distribution throughout companies quite often, is the inventory. Give me the basic information about each device I have. I need its IP address. I need to know its asset tag if we have it. I need to know when the last time we talked to it. I need to know its model. I need to know its OS. I need, I need, I need. And so these are the things that you would give to normally a network engineer who's trying to figure out what the next layer of install is or what the next device picture is going to look like. These things are provided by Network Automation in the standard report. So that pretty much concludes the life cycle of a network device. Of course, give the results follows at a call or get us online. Uh, be sure and uh, select uh, Network Automation or any other device or product that we support, and we'll be glad to get back to you and help. You.